Hey, what is up guys and welcome back to another video and welcome to everyone that checked out yesterday's video and is new here, it's fantastic for you to be here. Now, if you haven't already seen yesterday's video though, you can find that in the top right hand corner of this video and that was a head to head build guide with the tech chap and we both had i7 KB Lake processors and we wanted to see who could build the best system and who could overclock it the best. So if you haven't gone and checked that out and you haven't entered the giveaway for a GTX 1060, please go and do that in the top right hand corner of this video now. Otherwise, today we'll be talking about KB Lake processors once again, but more importantly, whether they're actually worth upgrading to, as that's the question that kept coming up in the comments section and it's actually something that's pretty important to address. So, before we can actually look at KB Lake processors and look at the new motherboards that we have for these processors, I first need to ask another question, and that is, well, why would you need to upgrade your CPU? What does your CPU do, and yeah, is it actually worth upgrading in the first place? Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to go and upgrade your processor thinking that it's going to change everything and then it just not really do anything at all. So your CPU or the processor in your system is of course in charge of all the calculations on your system and essentially it does work. And the more you stress your PC, the more work it has to do and the better the processor, the faster it can do said work. Simple, right? But the reason that it doesn't necessarily matter if you upgrade your CPU is because everything that happens on your CPU is limited by something. If it's limited by the processor, then upgrading your processor would then fix that problem and it would speed up your system. But a good example here is booting into Windows. Um, upgrading your processor may not actually make much of a difference at all, especially if you're using an older hard drive, as the limiting factor for most people booting into Windows is the speed of their hard drive. And by getting a fast SSD, that would actually speed up your system. And by increasing your processor performance, it may not do anything at all. And every task that you do on your computer is limited by something. So when you click on a web page, it may be limited by your processing speed, but it's much more likely to be limited by your internet web connection and the latency and the time it takes for you to search for something and then to retrieve the result and then display it on the page. It's probably going to be the network. Gaming is also limited by your graphics card, but it can also be limited by your CPU as well. And then if you're doing some high work, you're doing some rendering or you're doing some image editing, that may well be limited by RAM or CPU or quite often a combination of both. But I'm going to focus now on the gaming side of things because that's probably what most people are interested in. So if you're playing a game, let's say Battlefield 1, then it may be limited by your processor and it may be limited by your graphics card. Obviously, if you have a GTX 1080 and then you pair it with an AMD APU, yeah, it's going to be the processor that's going to reduce the amount of frames per second that you get in game. But likewise, if you have the maximum processor that you can get with money, you get a stupid Intel Xeon or you get the Intel 6900K, then yeah, it's probably not going to be the CPU, especially if you pair it with something like a 950 Ti or something like that. Obviously, your CPU isn't going to be a problem. But in order to actually address issues and increase the performance of your PC, you are going to need to work out whether it is the processor that is causing you some issues. Now, the way to do this is actually quite simple. You can get overlays for games that show your GPU usage, your RAM usage, your VRAM usage, and then your processor utilization, which in some ways is the easiest thing to do if you do know what you're doing. But if you just want to quickly check one particular application, let's say in this instance you want more performance in Battlefield 1, then simply all you need to do is boot into a game, start playing the game, and then go into windowed mode and then hit Control, Shift and S to get the task manager to appear. And then that will show your CPU lim um, utilization. And that will then show you if you're limited by the CPU, as if your CPU is running in the high 80s, 90s, or even hitting 100%, then you'll know that actually increasing your processor speed probably will help. And if you have a really good graphics card, and again, you're limited by your CPU, then a simple CPU upgrade could save you a lot of hassle and increase your performance and unlock the full potential of your PC. Now, another good way to test this is if you have a copy of Gears of War 4, which I know a lot of people don't, but to be fair, it's a great game anyway. That in-game benchmark is by far the best one I've ever come across. 
and it shows you so many different statistics about your system, but most importantly it shows you if you're GPU limited or if you're CPU limited, and then you can make an informed upgrade decision. So that's whether you that shows you why you would need to actually upgrade your CPU and hopefully should allow you to work out whether you're CPU limited or GPU limited in games. But upgrading to KB Lake provides a new chip and new motherboards. The new chip is by far the best gaming chip I've come across so far and the Intel 7700K is pretty much the best bang, bang for buck performance if you also want to do video editing or just any type of performance like that. And then as usual, the i5 is the best all round gaming chip because it has the best performance um, bar the i7, but you're not paying for hyper threading and things that most games can't take advantage of. So you're getting the maximum performance for your money. But it's not up worth upgrading to from Skylake, that's for sure. You've got about 6 to 7 different, um, percent performance difference between the two chips. And even going back as far as things like Haswell, it's not really worth upgrading. I mean, the Devil's Canyon chips hold up pretty well, and you're probably not going to be limited. Moving back, though, to the Sandy Bridge and the Ivory Bridge chips, yes, you're definitely going to see some performance difference. But again, it's going to depend on the game as those chips were really good at the time and they still hold up very well today. So make sure you actually check to see whether you're being CPU limited in these titles. So that's KB Lake from a performance side of things, but what about the new boards and the new chipset? Well, the chipset that I've been using is the Z270 chipset, which is the higher end of the chipsets, and it pretty much is the most feature rich and allows for overclocking of the K processors. I've been using two with a third that I have yet to actually put in a system. So they're behind me and it is the Maximus 9 Hero. This is the one I haven't used yet. And then the MSI Gaming uh, M7. And then the Asus Z270 Strix. So all of these are going to support pretty much all the new features of the chipset. But as you will see from a moment and the first board to talk about is the Asus Z270 Strix. And this board does lack one particular feature that is found on the other two, which is a brand new USB 3.1 header. And this is actually pretty exciting and it will require a complete rebuild of your system because you're going to need a compatible case, of which I don't know of any yet, that have the cables that actually connect to these headers. And this will mean you can get USB 3.1 on the front panel of your case, which I'm hoping to see some type C connectors and I'm be, I would be very surprised if we don't, but otherwise you'll probably, well, see so probably you may have a combination of type A and then type C, but if you don't already know, USB 3.1 brings with it a new connector, which is the type C connector, but also much faster speeds that will allow for increased transfer speeds and if you get something like a portable SSD, you'll be able to really see some improved performance of your USB devices. But that's a feature that's sadly not present on the Strix, it doesn't have that header, but otherwise it pretty much got everything you need. It adopts a stealthy black design with RGB lighting, which means that you can customize it to any color you like. Gone are the days of having a red board and then having it clash with the green or the blue in your system, as now you can connect some RGB strips to the RGB header on the motherboard and then have a completely redesigned RGB build that you can wake up one day and go, you know what, I fancy red today, and then the next you can change it to blue and you can create some cool effects and things like that. You've got DDR4 memory, which was of course found on the previous Skylake generation of boards and processors. And then as well, you've also got more M.2 slots. So the PCI M.2 SSDs that we are slowly moving towards, you can support more of these as there are two slots on this motherboard. But if you do want to step it up, then you're going to want to look at something like the Hero or the MSI M7. The M7 is pretty much MSI's go-to board at the moment. It's the one that they're heavily pushing. And it's quite easy to see why it adopts a really nice stealthy design once again. It's got the better RGB lighting of the two things, other than the really annoying thing that you've got a static green LED and a static red LED at the top of the board, which means that if you go for an all red design, then you have one green LED. And if you go for an all green system, then you've got one rogue red LED. And it's just, why why do that? It's just, when, when you're trying to create a perfect build, it was, it was quite annoying. But otherwise, again, loads of features. You've got three M.2 slots on this board, which is crazy. 
And one of them also features a shield, which means that you, if you bash it with your graphics card, it's protected with this shield. And then you've got armor throughout the board as well. It supports Intel Optane memory, which in all honesty, I don't really know much about, but we will be finding more out about that later on in the year. And then of course it supports the latest KB Lake processors. Now it is worth that you can, worth noting that you can also stick a Skylake processor in these boards, and you can also stick a KB Lake processor in an older board if you do a BIOS update. And then finally, moving over to the Maximus Hero. This is very similar to the M7. You've got quite a few M.2 slots on here as well. You've also got that USB 3.1 header as well for hooking up to a case. And then you've got things like Asus's BIOS, which is what I personally prefer. Um, although the MSI BIOS is very good, I just find it to be a little bit more cluttered. And then just plenty of features that we will be exploring in a future video, but this was just meant to give you a short overview. The long and short of it is the cheaper Z270 boards will lack a few features like those USB 3.1 headers, and if you step up and spend more money, you will be getting more M.2 slots, you'll be getting faster storage capability as a result, and you'll also have a few more features as well, like the LED indicators, as well as support for uh, the Optane memory. So yeah, that was a very quick overview of the processes, of the motherboards, and hopefully that's helped you answer whether it's worth upgrading to KB Lake. But for most people, no, not really. Not unless you're rocking an older generation of processor, but do check what processor you are using and do check whether you are limited in what you're trying to do as it's only then you actually know what component you should upgrade rather than just jumping ahead and upgrading the CPU because you think you need to. And then there are a load of other factors like have you upgraded your monitor? Basically, the point of this video, make sure that you sort of plot out what you're upgrading rather than just upgrading because you think you need to. Uh, I'd hate for anyone to spend their money on something that they weren't happy with. And there we go. I hope this video has been useful. Not too long, not too ranty. If you have enjoyed it, please hit the like button. If you haven't, hit the dislike button. For more videos just like this, do subscribe. And don't forget to check out the giveaway and yesterday's video in the top right hand corner of this video. Massive thank you to everyone here that supplied boards for this review. Thanks to Corsair for sponsoring the channel, and I will see you in the next video.